Welcome to the Kips Podcast. My name is Tyler Valencia, and I'm the president of Kips and Time to Train Fitness. We're doing another live broadcast for the individuals listening on maybe Spotify, Apple, SoundCloud. These these rather new podcast episodes, they're being duly recorded for YouTube. So if you want to see kind of the behind the scenes or the live version of, of it, make sure you head over to the link in the description to the Kips YouTube channel and watch it. See if you like it or continue to watch it on your favorite or listen to it on your favorite platform. I have another guest that in the YouTube realm, I mean, he's one of my favorites. Him and I have done some collaborations. We have Joe Alvarado from Joe Alvarado's Indoor Cycling. Joe, thank you for being my guest on the podcast. Oh, I'm honored, man. I'm honored. Anything I can do to to help you and just just spend some time with you, man. It's a good day for me. Oh, I appreciate it. Really do. And I mean, having you, having another one of our friends, Jason Cohen, on the podcast to kick off 2023. I mean, having you two start the year, it makes it so much easier for myself being the host to talk about these topics. Uh, because one, I think it's great content. I think when we talk about YouTube, we talk about the impact of online workouts and for today, what we're going to be talking about with mindset for filming online workouts, YouTube, but also the live training. That's one of the elements that I want to stress before we really get into the meat and potatoes of this episode is that Joe is also a live instructor. He's a manager. He manages instructors for a very large gym chain. And that perspective, that uh, view on things, I think is really interesting for listeners that might be in that boat. They're doing online, they're doing live. How do you mix them? How do you integrate both of them and that type of mindset? So Joe, before we get into it, for the listeners, can you give background, who you are, educational background and what you do? Yeah, no, absolutely. My name is Joe Alvarado again, and uh, I currently live in uh, Centennial, Colorado. Grew up, I'm, I'm a Colorado native and uh, I am a studio manager, as you just mentioned, uh, at Lifetime. And I, just, I oversee uh, cycle studio, yoga, small group classes. Um, and we have like about 150 classes on our schedule. Uh, I teach also there. I teach indoor cycling, which uh, I love, love, love. And I teach a kettlebell class. So And then jump in and sub anytime they need me. But <laughs> yeah, that's what I do now. And I have a, a YouTube channel. So Joe Alvarado indoor cycling uh, started a couple of years ago and absolutely love, love, love uh, my, what I call cycle fam. And <laughs> it's so fun, you know, as technology advances. And I guess we'll, we'll talk about that here in a minute, but yeah. we get to do fun things online and, and really uh, help people at the end of the day. So th those are two things that I love the in-person and uh, the online stuff. So love it. Love it. And spot on there with impacting people online and, and live, you know, that's, Part of why we get into this industry to help others and you know spread our knowledge, our education, and hopefully make that impact that gets them creating healthy habits, all those kinds of things. But uh, let's quickly talk about, and this is, was something that you and I <laughs> were chatting about before we hit the record button with our setups, all that kind of stuff. I mean, since you and I have become friends, I mean, I think it was at least a year ago. Uh, I feel like your setup, your background, all that kind of stuff has, it's almost night and day probably. Um, just looking at it right now for the listeners too. Um, if, if you check out the YouTube feed, you could see Joe's part of Joe's background. What's kind of been your approach to that with, <laughs> you know, painting, with buying new equipment? What's been your outlook for all that stuff? Yeah, um, I, I think... First of all, if you're going to be on YouTube, you have to try to get better all the time. And, it, and it's not to really outdo anybody, but it's to provide a better quality for yeah. the people you really care about, you know. Yeah. Your and so um, I started out downstairs uh, in my basement with just a big green screen and lots of lights and, 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 and green behind me. I would just put, you know, different visuals behind my uh, bike and then... Uh, what would happen though, is I would have to take all that equipment, you know, all the videos and, and the, the cards and then take them upstairs to my computer and then download them and then edit and, you know, and all that fun stuff. And, uh, you know, since time doesn't stop, you know, I, I figured like, is there a way to minimize? Is there a way to save time? And so, um, my son and I uh, thought like we, we walked into my office and we were saying, how, how can we utilize the office as a studio. How can we double this? 
And so long story short, we ended up putting my, I'm looking at my desk right now and there's a window, um, the, the sunlight's coming in through here. So I have a window in front of me. And so my desk is pressed up against the window. And then behind me is, and I don't want to move too far away from the mic, but behind me is, uh, the studio part. So I have like the office part in the front and then, and then behind me is the bike. And what's cool is all my cameras are connected to the computer on my office desk. Right. And so I literally, like if I'm, I'm working right here, I could literally move my chair to the side, go and hop on my bike, hit record. And it's all in one kind of an all in one space. Um, and then I went with the blue in the background because blue, uh, is better than the green, than the green. <laughs> out the blue, meaning that um, I could still have the option to um, put a green screen effect behind me. Mm -hmm. uh, and so that was the idea behind that, to be able to kind of do the both, you know, just a solid blue background um, with some fun, you know, you see the LED lights behind me mm -hmm. or, um, or key out the, the blue and just put a fun, you know, fun background on there. Yep. So yeah, just really trying to get better at it and, uh, and saving time. And, and it's really like, you do two things. I feel like when you save time, you produce more content for your audience, which mm -hmm. you want to do because we want to produce as much as we can. Um, but then you save yourself time in life, right? So yep. there's reasons why, uh, you know, constantly trying to, to do that. Yeah. Uh, kind of the, the overhead of, of what it looks like now or what, it, what, what I do. The, cool thing that I want to point out here, and it's the same for me in terms of, I think some people think that like we have these humongous like spaces to film. Like we have these like sets when they see the production that goes out, like, oh my, like I can never get some, like I'm in a bedroom in my house. It's yeah. a bedroom. I mean, it's a weird shape bedroom. That's why I'm in this room and uh, not my old office inside my house. But with camera angles, you can really create something cool that depending upon what format you have too, like camera angles really play an important part of that, that, I mean, you can shape and frame something that transforms your video. Like somebody will never know like, Oh, that's someone's uh, office in their house. They would, they, they would never know that. And that's really the beauty of filming something is you transform it. And I like how you mentioned though, your approach mentally with it, that, each one you want to get better. It's not the, you know, you're trying to compare it. And I, I kind of word it and phrase it as these are part of our tools for online workouts. When you teach live and you have your voice, you got the music, you have your hands and whatnot, but with online, you can take that. And now you have another tool. That's a part of your experience on the bike. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. And to your point, like this isn't a big office at all. If I back up too far, like I'm, I'll run into my bike, like right behind, <laughs> right behind my, my chair yeah. here. It's, uh, it, it's, you know, and, and cameras have wide angles now and they, they can do some cool things, you know, for us uh, yep. leaders. and yeah, it's, it's, it's a lot of fun, but yeah, all in one space right here. It's, 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 uh, it's nice. It's saving yeah. time, helping produce more content for sure. Yeah. And, um, I think something cool to kind of jump into with talking about uh, second camera angles, because that's something that someone that's maybe in the intermediate stage, maybe they're growing. Okay, I got my content rolling. I got my online workout. I kind of got my setup here. How do you use a second camera angle when you're up there? I call it, I know that we, I joke with you about you're a composer up there. You're producing up there because you switch on. That's one of your new things is you're switching while you are recording which is mine. It's crazy. Like <laughs> that amount of skill to do that. How do you use that second camera angle to impact the ride? Yeah, well, it wasn't until recently um, that I, I started doing it more efficiently, I guess, if you will. Um, because at the very basic level, somebody could just get two cameras and put one, you know, facing the side or, or maybe your flywheel or, or just a different angle if you're doing a different type of workout mm -hmm. and then, you know, your front angle. And uh, what I currently do is, uh, and, and this isn't a commercial for Algato or anything, but I now <laughs> um, these 4K uh, 60 frames per minute uh, per second. Um, is that what it is per second, right? Frames, frames per second. 
frame, 60 frames per second. Uh, when you're, when you're recording stuff, sometimes we're live and like, am I saying it right? You know, um, but yeah, 4k 60 frames per second, the equivalent of a DSLR and, uh, which is, you know, a photography camera. Mm-hmm. And so these are webcams that have that high quality. Um, and, and I, now I have two. Okay. So I have one coming off to the side that will show me from the side there. And then mm-hmm. one front. Um, and then I have the stream deck, which is also made by Elgato and it allows me to just push a button and it, it shows the one I want to show. Mm-hmm. And so what's fun about that is, uh, as a self production, um, I don't ever have to go back anymore and guess when did I look at the camera you know, I can really <laughs> push the button and say, Hey, and if you're with me today, this is so much fun. This is going to be amazing. You know, hit the button and then look at the camera that's active, you know, so yeah. it really saves um, in the editing process. So, and it's, a, in my opinion, again, um, DSLRs are, are, are pretty costly for a decent one. Mm-hmm. I would recommend if, if you wanted to get into uh, two camera angles, um, the, the 4k cameras from Algato, they're 300 bucks each, you know, and you can get a, another stream deck, like for under a thousand dollars, you can get a couple of camera angles with 4k quality. Uh, you know, there's probably a little bit more than that to it, but um, just those pieces of equipment, which a good DSL, DSLR camera will cost you that and, and even more, you know, so. That's big. I mean, right when you say, I didn't know the cost of that. I'll admit that on this podcast. I didn't know the cost of those cameras. And I mean, I just got some more cameras for myself and my team. And I mean, we were in the 600 to uh, 700 range right there for the type of cameras that I, I like Sony cameras. And I mean, that's like bottom of the tier of like what Sony has to offer. And so, I mean, to get into the game with that, with a trusted brand, Elgato, I mean, they are one of the top ones for streaming. And I mean, that's whenever you hear about gamers, what they're doing with streaming and whatnot, I mean, they'll have, I mean, like you, like you, like you, they have a whole desk full of Elgato stuff because it's a trusted name brand. It's something that, I mean, if you're spending money on something, okay, you want something you know is going to work, be trusted. That's one of them right there. And so I definitely wanted to make sure I come back to that point to check it out. If you want to go towards that, that route of adding a second angle angle, or maybe even being more efficient with your filming, doing what Joe's doing here, like he's cutting out that middle. I can tell you right now that what with the kind of the setup that and the workflow that I have for online workouts, uh, I do have to match sync them up and then watch every single minute. If you're a busy professional, you want to add in that second second angle and you want to do it while it's while you're recording and producing that way, it's a very smart way of doing it that you can do those types of things, use that second angle to create that experience right there and do it on the fly. It takes a lot of skill, uh, which Joe had does that he does have, but uh, it's a great way right there. So, um, one more piece about your background and the evolution of it and <clears throat> kind of how you've used that for your own branding, even because I feel like the blue is all part of too, your brand, how you're creating that presence online with the investment of it too, because I think you mentioned something before we started recording, how you're buying and selling it. Has that kind of been your outlook on it along the whole the whole time is okay. If I don't like it, I'll sell it. Um, because I think that some people just look at that first purchase and like, God, oh, this was a big cost, but I've done the same thing. If I buy some, something for streaming, sometimes if I don't like it or I want to upgrade it, I'll just sell it. Yeah, no, absolutely. Like I, I kind of grew up with that mindset of if I'm going to get something new, what am I going to do with what I have now? Like, am I, is yeah. it just in the closet or can I do something else with it or just sell it, you know? And so, um, yeah, if I, if I upgrade, I right away, you know, you got to think, you know, with that business mindset, like I don't want to just keep spending money. Um, yeah. but you want to get something that's more efficient for my time. So you weigh out like how much time is it going to save me? And then can I throw this on eBay and what can I get for it? And so, yeah, I'm constantly like, you know, moving through equipment that, uh, that will improve my time, uh, flow, my workflow. And then, mm-hmm. you know, you know, get somebody else into uh, what I was using before. Yeah. Uh, you just, just throw it up on eBay, you know? Yeah. Get- the, the secondhand market is powerful, not just for selling, but also buying too. There's a guarantee there's somebody out there in that boat 
listening right now, they can go find a good deal on an interface, a camera, microphone, whatever they need to improve their their workflow. And I think that that's a good way of looking at it instead of just thinking about the cost right away. Think about how much time you do save. Like that's been one of the things that I know that's evolved with my own setup is the the time that I save with not having to always reset things up or that I can be more efficient with filming or whatnot. I mean, part of my desk right now is a light, a camera, a, a, a mini tripod, my microphone arm, all these kinds of things. But it helps take away time that I, so that I can do things that do generate money. So I think that's a great way of looking at it right well, there and know, a good point. As an example, like I, I was telling you before we started, I just got done recording <laughs> and I hopped off and uh, turned on a camera and now we're, now we're doing something different. I'm all in the same space, you know, yeah. so it's pretty cool. Yeah. Oh yeah. That's very cool. <laughs> and it's, it just shows like the power of, power of, you know, online, but also like creating a good workflow for doing, for creating content for our own brands. Now I'm going to segue here to, um, I don't, I don't know the best term, like the lifestyle of doing YouTube, but also in person. Cause I think that that's one of the things that where you do have great experience with that with people listening and it being 2023, beginning of 2023, your gym or even yourself, you might be thinking about how do I add elements of online or maybe the facility I work for does want to add online. And okay, instructor that's in that boat, the beginning process of it though, entry or not an entry level instructor, but beginning to think about online. And the reality of it is that online, I mean, it can be lucrative, but it's not an immediate money generator for most. Right. I had to preface that for most. How have you yourself approached it with, I mean, you let's think two years ago, year and a half ago, when you were just getting into YouTube and you were teaching on how did you kind of create that balance of, okay, I, I know this can be something that can be a, a money generator YouTube, but I also have my in person. How did you balance both of those and how did you approach both of them? That's, that's a great question. I, um, I want you to, I want to try to explain, um, yeah, I could, I can explain this, right. Uh, it's been, it's been evolving and it still is, you know, uh, still learning, yeah. but I think currently the way I approach it is I, I, there's three different things. If, if you're new, um, if you're, ex, you want to get into online or live or, or merge the two, there's three different things to think about. When you're live, um, you there are certain things you could do live that you can't do um, on the camera. So, in other words, if I'm teaching live, um, I can get off the bike and kind of walk around and encourage, you know, uh, the members. Whether it's a cycling class or a weight training class, I can be present, be there. Um, mm -hmm. Which on camera that would be kind of weird, right? So you don't you don't get <laughs> up, you don't leave the camera shot because people need to see you. So you, there's there's that angle of live, right? There's there's and just speak, speaking of live, there's that that's what I could do live. Um, and then on the camera, obviously it's it's the opposite. We're we're gonna stay in the shot. We're gonna stay engaged. We're gonna stay looking at the camera. We're going to uh, at another level, if you will. Um, you, you you're I don't want to say exaggerated, but you do want to animate just a hair more, um, mm -hmm. because all it, it, it comes across, you know, you, you want to deliver that energy, right? Like, come on, like you could do, you know, and, and you may not be that live. Like it, it's, there's this hybrid, right. And then, um, uh, one of the things that I picked up, uh, over, um, our, our location at lifetime. And again, I, I might be all over the place, but I'll land it. I'm okay. Proud. <laughs> at, at, at Lifetime, uh, we we were doing um, live, uh, and um, live and streaming at the same time. Okay, mm -hmm. so we would have equipment set up in the room in the same room that we were teaching, and so it became a hybrid version of of me introducing myself to the class. That whoever is watching via online sees me kind of look around, right? And then you have, you can't forget that there's somebody on the screen or on the camera looking at you. So it's more of a, Hey, welcome to, to cycle today. My name is Joe. I'm so glad that you're here with me. If you're brand new, welcome. And those of you online, like you look at the camera and those of you online who are with us right now, I'm so glad you're with us. We're going to do this together online in person, you know, and then you, you talk to two different audiences at the same time. So all that to say with those experiences, 
I've, um, I've learned uh, to, to kind of merge the two outside of leaving the camera frame, right? Merging mm-hmm. the two to say, okay, if I'm teaching live, um, is it okay for me to, to, like when I'm teaching live, I, it is okay that sometimes I stop and I look around, even though they're getting after it, you know, and I'm just kind of observing, right? Mm-hmm. And I think that's okay if you're teaching on camera, like you can, you could simulate that, like, you know, get up, <laughs> stop a little bit and like, I'm watching you, come on, you got this. And then get back to that, you know, that workout with them. Mm-hmm. Not only that, sometimes you, you can't breathe and you need to talk. A little <laughs> <bit>. <laughs> and, and then, um, and then, you know, vice versa, like when I'm teaching live, we have like countdown timers and things that we use, um, that help us guide the class in a live setting. And I, and I, when I went over to using a stream deck, I wondered, is that going to look weird if I'm like pushing a button on camera while I'm teaching? And then I thought, well, it, nobody ever, it doesn't look weird live. Why would it look weird on camera? Like, you know, Mm -hmm. so it, it was kind of thinking through what do I do live? What do I do behind a camera? And what is the best of both that works, that feels natural, that delivers the energy and gives the best um, production possible in both settings, you know? Yeah. So I think that that's where uh-huh. I'm at. Yeah. A quick little promo break here in this episode. If you're a fan of the Kibbs podcast, you know that at some point there's a promotion for the Naboso Duo insoles. I just pulled these out of my shoes, gave them a quick rinse to get the sock dust off of them, and I wanted to talk about them because they're great. They're fantastic. They make an impact on your daily life. If you sit at a desk or if you're on your feet, sometimes your feet just feel achy or maybe they feel like they went asleep. That's for myself. I felt like after working a full day that my feet did not want to go to the gym, work out, do something active, and it led to some bad habits. But with these, I feel more active, I feel I can do more things, and I've been using them for over a year now. With your clients, with your family, with your friends, share them, talk about them, see what they think, because they really do make a difference. If you if your feet feel more active, you're gonna be more active, and that equates to being more healthy. Check them out. There's a link in the description. See all the products they have. And let's get back to this episode. Yeah, I think that you brought up a really good point with the thinking through the experience of it. Um, I feel like I've said in different podcasts, they're totally different, but then you start to blend them almost. Um, I I think it was a different episode that I recorded with you. I mentioned how I, I taught a live class and it had been a while since I taught a live class, but I felt like I was already, I didn't have to go through that initial phase. If you've ever taken a break from teaching group at fitness or any type of group in general, uh, I feel like there's like a, a couple sessions you need to kind of get back on your feet with teaching online. I already felt like I had the language down. I had my rhythm of it. So now let's say you're doing both taking pieces of it, I think you're still doing the same. You're thinking, how does that individual that's taking the class online live, how are they receiving it and how are they processing? And I think you brought up a good point with how you just had to work through it in terms of if I am producing it live when I'm recording, talking about your online, how does that affect the, the viewer? And I think it was that last episode I did with Jason Cohen of Kaylee Cohen Fitness how he mentioned that sometimes we overthink some of these things because if you think if someone's doing an exercise, they're most likely not looking at the screen. They are focused on either, you know, that exercise, they're looking down at the mat, the ground, or if they're on a bike, they're looking at the monitor, they're looking at the timer, like, oh, how much longer do I have to get through that, that drill? So I think sometimes we overthink that. No, that's, that's absolutely right. And the other thing I would say too, is if you've, if you're listening to this and you feel like, like you're going to mess up too much, if you start recording or you start streaming, like, I think I, I, I I was overthinking it, you know, just to your point and what Jason said, I was overthinking it. And I would like start the recording over and over again. Hey, welcome to, oh, I didn't like, Hey, welcome to doing that. Um, and there's a certain, you know, you, you, there's a certain measure of you want to make sure you're communicating it clearly. But <laughs> when I'm in person and I make a mistake, nobody cares. You know, like I, I just say, I mean, well, 
you know what I mean. You know, you you just correct mm-hmm. yourself. You have fun. You blow it off. You keep moving. And and I and I feel like the more I record um, videos and and the more that I do YouTube, it's it almost feels a little more natural to the viewer if mm-hmm. they, you know, you didn't exactly get your introduction perfectly every time. You know, you didn't exactly yeah. get cylinders. I mean, there's some that you're you're on. You're on. Yeah. Some you're like, hey, we're gonna do this and blah blah blah. And, Oh yeah, but we got one more song. <laughs> there is one more song, you know, like nobody cares. If anything, it just brings the human aspect to, to what we do. And so Agreed. I just want to encourage anybody out there, if you're afraid of the camera, because you think you have to always say the right thing or look a certain way, or just, just hit record, right? Just do it, mm-hmm. go for it, be yourself. Like people, you know, they would rather follow somebody who, who, um, uh, is real than somebody who's always right. I think somebody yeah. said that. So. That's a good point. It's a good point. And um, I think that, you know, the ma- mistakes, I don't, they're, not, they're not even mistakes, I, I say. Um, th- those elements, the realness of it, I, but I feel like that's where you show your personality. If you can process it, but then also show like, oh, like, oh, I made a mistake, make a joke about it, roll it off somebody is probably in that same boat. That's like, Oh, like that's the personality. I like that. You make that connection through the screen there that the people, that's why they keep coming back. Think about live. Why do people come back and why are some instructors more popular than others? The personality of the instructor, if they were just that hard nose boot camp instructor that just crushed people, but they didn't, they didn't really have a personality. Would they keep showing? Maybe. I mean, those are, that's part of the business of, you know, working in a gym, but you know, the personality element, that's why people come back. That's why some instructors, they have followings that people follow them to different gyms. We all know that if you're listening, if you're an instructor, you know that people have their followings, their usuals, and you got to do, create that online as well. With now the business element of doing online and, uh, and in person, did you feel like at the beginning at all that the online element was kind of a I don't want to say a side hustle, but something that um, it was a sacrifice. Would you say that? Would you agree with that? Like it was a sacrifice. You knew that this in time investment will build to something more. Yes. No, absolutely. I mean, it's, it's a total sacrifice. Um, it's something that uh, I think you mentioned earlier. It, 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 it can be, um, you know, something that makes you uh, money could be lucrative, but that doesn't come anytime soon. Um, It is a sacrifice. It is one of those things where you have to really um, pace it out, right? You have to deliver consistent, you know, um, uh, product, you know, consistent, you know, um, video and, 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 or classes rather content is what I'm trying to say, consistent Mm -hmm. content, but uh, you can't burn yourself out. You know, there's, there's, there's a rhythm to it. And you have to be committed and, and you have to dig deep sometimes and remind yourself, like, why are you doing this and who is it for? And then what I like to do is like, you know, I love to take some of the comments that I find in, in the videos and just use that for, for energy and use it for, you know, just to encourage myself. You know, somebody says something that, hey, if I, I lost a certain amount of pounds or I'm all the way from New Zealand or I'm doing this, or I just got done here and they, they, they show a picture or they just express their gratitude for, for what you do. Like, those are the things you really have to, um, absorb, you know, because those help you keep moving. They remind you, you know, why you're doing it and for who you're doing it. Cause it's not going to go away. I mean, I online, uh, uh, workouts and, 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 um, the platform, it's just not going to go away. It's going to evolve. It's going to change in, in the quality and, and uh, the engagement and, and what we can do with it um, to improve, but it's not going to go away. You know, you always have somebody who is traveling who, um, and, and, to, and, and if I could just say this, uh, one thing that I've noticed, and, and I'm sure if you've been to any gym, and maybe this is even you listening, um, people will go to the gym because they want to be around people, but they're still looking at their phone doing an online workout. (laughs) So it's, it's amazing. It's like they need people, right? They don't want to be at home by themselves, or maybe they don't have equipment, but they show up to the gym and there's not a class going on, or they just really, maybe they don't want to be a part of the class. They still want to be 
on their own and they have their headphones on and they're just following a workout. So it, it, it it's not going anywhere. It's not going yeah. anywhere. I've been, I've been creating some YouTube shorts that say, Hey, if you are a part of a gym and you, there's a bike at the gym and there's not a class <laughs> at the time you're in, grab your YouTube app and follow me, you know? And so yeah, I'm encouraging people to, it is healthy to get out, you know, and, and be around people, but you can, you know, still utilize the best of both worlds for sure. Yeah. I mean, I just thought of a, a memory of, I think it was before the pandemic time. I remember I saw someone just on their phone following a workout video at the gym and I just thought, oh, like, and small joke here. Cause I saw someone posted about this, like on Facebook about like, oh, see, like gyms are f- full swing. Like people need community. And like in the back of my head, I was thinking like, I, when I used to go to the gym, like I didn't talk to anybody. Like I just had my headphones in <laughs> and I was listening to music. Um, caveat, it's, and it's a small joke. You know, I feel like this person posting about it should have, but like group fitness, I feel like people join group fitness for community. Cause like, that's where you inter- interact. But like, I feel like the majority of people that go like work out at the gym, I mean, you'd have like your usual, like gym buddies that you say hi to the usuals you see, but like mostly, I mean, you're there to, to work out, get it done. And you know, hopefully just not be bothered, be able to follow your program. Um, but, you know, with in-person training and, you know, maybe somebody that's listening in this boat that, um, you know, maybe they tried it, they stopped for a little bit. Uh, what has been kind of maybe those tips that you've shared with them to maybe get back on the wheel or that you would share with them to get back on it, get back on the bike, get back on the filming. It could be business related or it could be mentally, you know, what have been some of those tips that you've shared? I would say, you know, um, it's never too late and it's never too crowded. Um, there's always room because you're going to influence somebody that, that I can't, that Tyler can't, that Kaylee can't, you're going to attract an audience that's exclusive to you. Yeah. And so if it's for the reason of, of, uh, it's too saturated, YouTube's too big or the online's too big. I'll never, there is an audience for everyone, you know? Yeah. So I would say if that's a reason, you know, don't let that be the reason you, you just have to find your audience and YouTube will help you. The algorithm will help you. Um, I, I would also say if, if it's, if it's a time investment, you know, it's one of those things where what we talked about today, find the absolute, like, uh, a, a, a 4k webcam that you can record straight to your computer and with, with a decent mic and you're done, like go for it. Like there's yeah. ways to do it time efficiently now, um, that, that don't, uh, it, there is, you know, a little time investment in learning it all, but it's not impossible. It's, it's really not. Um, if you have that drive, uh, there's ways to do it in, in a minimal amount of time. And there's, um, and there's an audience for you. I would say both of those things. Um, just go for it, go for it. I love that angle. I I love that, that, uh, that angle, that approach to that right there about the not being too saturated. I mean, cause it's it's global. Like that's one of the things that we forget when we think about online is that it's global. You don't know who in the world is going to be watching it and be following it, who you can impact those types of things. And, with finding an audience, I mean, that's one of the things where when you think about it, I think I made a joke in the last podcast episode about how like how powerful Google's like algorithm and like the technology they have. Um, I think the joke I made was about like Skynet from like Terminator and how they can just find anybody. <laughs> but like that, that's literally how it works. That once YouTube gathers data, information, the algorithm improves. They show your content to people that are going to most likely click on it. And then it builds. Then once they click on it, they find another person like that and they get smarter and smarter and smarter. And, you know, that's the power of it is that they start to find those people too. Cause if you're making good content, they want to show it to more people and help, help the, that platform grow that way. And of course there's a business element to it, but um, I kind of want to go back to what you were talking about with online and um, you know, gyms, if they are having elements of online with in-person and whatnot, how have you seen it from your own perspective? That's one of the, I think, things that I don't know as much about, but I'd love to hear what your thoughts are on how gyms are integrating it from what you've seen with the gym that you work with, but even others that you've talked to, how have they integrated? Do you think that they're going to add more of it? 
Yeah. Um, so the experience that I have, and then uh, the little that I know of, of other gyms, the, the experience that I have is a uh, lifetime. They've selected a handful of their 160 plus locations to just be a, a live streaming um, facility, if you will, not exclusive, but to add live stream to live classes. And so you have live stream in live classes. And that means that there's equipment that they've, that they've uh, placed in the class itself. And it was more, it's kind of like what I was sharing with you earlier. Hey, if you're online and if you're here, you know, kind of a dual audience um, with, with some equipment that, that helps with, with all the noise and making sure that the mic is clear and all things uh, and all that kind of stuff. Now, the other thing that we do is on the, on our member app, there are on demand classes. So um, you could go on the member app and say, all right, I want a pre-recorded, which is very polished, kind of like what you and I do, Tyler, we're, we're, we're so polished, right? We look so good. No, uh, we're, <laughs> we're, we're, it's a polished pre-recorded um, uh, class. So you can do that on, on the app, or you could do the live, you could look at the live schedule and say, oh, I want to take a class happening at the California blah, blah, blah location um, at 415 or whatever the time may be. So those are like the two ways that that it's being done. And then, of course, just live, live, like you're there at the gym taking a class. Uh, and then I've also seen, um, and we were talking about it a little bit, there are some platforms out there that um, that will help integrate both uh, that that we've kind of seen, um, I, and we, we talked a little bit about this, like anywhere from, ah, that's not helping to, yeah, you know, <laughs> work, you know, this, so it, it can be challenging, like to go live and live for sure. Um, uh, my, you know, the company I work for, they've found a way to, to do those, you know, three pieces in person, a hybrid, and then just pre-recorded, you know, um, on-demand versions of it. So we're getting here to the podcast takeaways and a lot of great information, I feel like, for instructors that are listening to digest, but also consider. I mean, that's why I wanted to have Joe on the podcast to bring in his experience with online and live uh, and working with instructors and his experience with working with gyms that are doing online and live. I think that's a unique experience, but also something that listeners, they're, they're probably going through right now with their gym, looking at the softwares, all that kind of stuff. But uh, with our podcast takeaways, I've switched it up for 2023 with the guests that have been coming on the Kips podcast. And so Joe, and you can take this, of course, any way you want, how you want to, um, what kind of tips you want to share, insight, that kind of stuff. But what are three myths about our favorite platform, YouTube? Uh, I think we mentioned one earlier and it was that it's too, it's too crowded. Um, that is definitely a myth. Uh, it's only growing and there's more people that need to see you. So it's yep. not too full. It's not too late. That is definitely a myth for sure. I like that one. Let's say another one is it's not impossible. Um, you don't have to break the bank. And I think I'm taking a little bit from our conversation earlier. <laughs> Uh, that you, you can get into um, uh, streaming at a minimal cost. You know, there's so many videos. I, I think of uh, Think Media uh, has a, um, a YouTube channel that has all kinds of resources on there. Sean Cannell, um, mm -hmm. their team uh, that, that can show you how to do it on a budget. So, it, 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 you know, even if you have next to no budget, you, you, can, still, you can still do it. Yep. One more. And I would say... The last myth. What is the last myth, man? Uh, that you, um, you're unique and, and you, how can I say this? It, you, you don't have to be anybody else. Um, you don't, you can be inspired by other people, but mm -hmm. you don't have to have a certain thing, right. To be on YouTube. You can be you. Yeah. Um, you don't have to have any kind of it factor. Um, because you will attract somebody, you, you have an audience. Yeah. Um, I, I guess that's it. There's not a net factor. You're the it, you're the it. Uh, Just I dig that. Doing it. <laughs> that's it. I yeah. dig that. Then, I mean, I had a, I had already like what I wanted to say, if I, which one I want, I want to follow up there, but then you throw in this last one. I'm like, dang, that's such a good one. Um, <laughs> but I want to kind of just, 
uh, finish off and talk about what you mentioned with, uh, you don't just, you don't need special stuff. I mean, you can kind of roll with what you got. I've seen YouTube channels, uh, a lot of them, they're in their house. I mean, the majority of them are in their house. There's a very small amount that they have like full on studios, but I've seen them when they're doing workouts in their garage and they have thousands, thousands of subscribers. So to think that you don't have to do what Joe and I do. I mean, we have sets that we've kind of built to look like a different area, but you could do them in your garage. You, you don't need to go that full amount. I'm sure once you get into it though, you get that this kind of bug that you're like, oh, I want to get more. I want to get, I want to develop it more. And that's all part of it. It's all part of the fun of it. But uh, all great tips there. Joe, before we sign off, can you give information about your YouTube channel, uh, the URL for it or the username for it, your social media channel and uh, any new workouts that uh, you got releasing soon? Yeah. Um, so YouTube, they have handles now. It's at Joe Alvarado or you can just search for Joe Alvarado Indoor Cycle. Uh, same with uh, Instagram, uh, Joe Alvarado Indoor Cycle. You'll find me there. I uh, would love to connect with you on any questions. I, I, I dialogue with a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, um, online followers all the time, you know, and so please uh, message me, comment, whatever you want. I'd love to talk to you. Um, I, I'm currently working on a whole power series of, mm -hmm. of, of workouts, uh, meaning that um, I call them playing with power. And uh, power is what you generate with force and velocity on a bike. And how can we manage energy to play with a certain amount of power in a certain amount of time? And so that's kind of a kind of a fun little series playing with power. Cool. Very cool. And the links for both of those channels, Instagram and um, Joe's YouTube will be in the description of this episode. So you can quickly go over there. Joe, thank you as always. Sharing a lot of great insight. Got the brain in there. Thank you for coming on the podcast. Thank you again, my friend. Thank you. Appreciate it, Tyler.